Hi there, I'm Wendy McCallum, burnout and alcohol coach and wellness expert, and you're listening to Bite Size Balance, where everyday extraordinary women share their stories, expertise, and wisdom, all in the name of lifting each other up and creating a better life by design. Whether it's wellness, career, relationships, food, alcohol, mindfulness, hormones, or parenting, we talk about all things women's balance. If your life looks great on paper, but it still feels like something's missing, you're in the right place. Welcome to Bite Size Balance. Hello, everyone. Happy holidays. I hope everyone's having a great December so far. I am back with another one of my little snack-sized bite-sized balance podcast. So this is going to be less than a half an hour. I'm looking at the clock and sticking to it. Uh, I know it's a busy time of the year and I don't know about you, but I like having podcasts that are different lengths. Sometimes I really love having a long one to listen to if I'm driving or I'm out for a long walk. And other times I like the really, the really short ones. So I thought I'd provide you with a little bite, actual bite-sized content today. Um, Normally the bite size balance refers to, you know, just one topic at a time, which is what we try to do in the episodes. But today it's really about the amount on the fork. So I'm going to keep it small. It's resolution season. So this felt like a really great time to come back and do a podcast on how to actually make lasting change instead of setting a bunch of goals that you actually don't achieve and that then just make you feel crappy because you failed again. So I've done an episode like this in the past, I believe, but it feels like a really great time to come in and just give you guys like a really quick refresher on how to actually make lasting change. So before I get started on that, I've got a list of 10 tips that I'm going to give you before I get started on that. Just a reminder that I am running for probably the only time in 2023, a coach led six week rewind program, which is an opportunity for you to join other women in a coach led six week alcohol experiment. Now the official break from alcohol is a 30 day break, but we do have a week where we do a lead in. And then we have a week at the end where we talk about what's next for you. And, um, some of the women in this group in the past have continued on with an alcohol free experiment after the 30 days. Some of them have not, that'll be up to you, but we will, I will give you a really great framework for making a decision as to what makes sense for you going, going forward after that 30 days. The program is uh, starting officially on January 6th. If you register before January 2nd, though, you can take advantage of $100 off the price, which is a a fifth off the price. So it's a great, it's a really great savings. And um, that is available by using the coupon code JANREWIND. Um, this is an incredibly popular program. Just go and look at the, um, the, the page on my website, which is wendymccallum.com forward slash rewind. You're going to see a bunch of, uh, feedback from previous participants in this course. I have, there's so much more where that came from. We always get rave reviews for this program this year. I'm running it as a program by myself. So I will be coaching the five live group coaching sessions, um, myself, uh, and those are just a fabulous place to uh, get some, make some connections, feel like you're in a community and you're not alone in all of this, and also ask the questions that you have around how to actually make this work for you um, and how to process some of the information that you're learning um, in the course of your own experiment. So again, that's the Rewind program. You can find all the details at wendymccallum.com forward slash rewind. Use the code JANREWIND to get $100 US off Um, until January 2nd only after that, it goes up to full price. Uh, And I would absolutely love to have you, whether you are someone who's gone through Rewind before, has worked with me as a one-on-one client in the past, and just would love to reconnect and get a little support and build some more community. Uh, Maybe you've worked, you've worked with me one-on-one or again, have been in some other group with me. Um, You can do this program if you've never taken a break from alcohol before, but you're starting to feel like it's not serving you anymore. Uh, Or you can take it if you've taken many breaks from alcohol before. Maybe you're someone who's done lots of sober Octobers and, you know, um, dry Januaries, but you still haven't quite gotten to where you want to get to with alcohol in that it is still running the show. It is not small and irrelevant in your life. You're thinking about it more than you want to. The only criteria for this is that you need to to be female or identify as female in order to be in the group. I keep it as a women's only group um, because I think that creates a special sense of community and um, that's how I like to do it. So let's get on to now how to make some lasting change. Now, if alcohol is the area that you're trying to make lasting change around, 
you can apply all of these things to that. And you will see these reflected in any programming that I do definitely in that rewind six week course. Okay. So the first thing that I really want to focus in on that is critically important, it's something that I have dedicated podcasts to before, is this idea of making sure that you're framing your goals from a place of abundance and what you're going to get from making the change as opposed to from a place of deprivation, i.e. what you need to give up. So if you're historically, you know, have set a goal like uh, using the words I will, uh, sorry, I won't like... Um, I am not going to eat sugar for 30 days, or I'm not going to drink for 30 days. That is a deprivation based goal because it's all about what you need to give up. And that is necessarily going to have you feeling deprived. And when you feel deprived, you don't feel good. Why does that matter? Because we only do things that feel good. You guys, we can do things for a short period of time that don't feel good using willpower. But as I'm going to talk about in a second, that doesn't work for very long. We do things that feel 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 good. So if it feels good, you're going to keep doing it. So be really careful about the actual language you use when setting your goal. This is a semantics exercise, really. But the words we use, it, they really directly impact our thoughts and our thoughts impact our actions. So instead of saying, I won't, think about switching that goal over to an I will based goal. So, so for example, instead of I won't eat sugar for 30 days, I will choose foods mindfully that nourish me and make me feel energized, right? That's great. Um, the other thing you can do is you can set your goal based on how you want to feel instead of what you want to accomplish. So if we're going back to the alcohol idea, instead of saying, I want, I will not drink for 30 days, you can say, uh, I'm going to experiment with what it's like to not drink because I want to, I want to get to a place where alcohol feels small and irrelevant. So my goal is to have alcohol. My goal, when I first stopped, stopped drinking, did my first real true experiment using those three C's that I talked about in a previous podcast episode. If you haven't listened to that one, go back and listen to that. That was a couple of episodes ago, I believe that, um, experiment involved me for the first time really focusing in on how I wanted to feel. And I said, I don't want this thing running the show anymore. That was my goal. I want to be back in the driver's seat. I want to feel like I have control over alcohol. And it hasn't felt that way for a long time because there have been so many nights, like hundreds of nights where I've said to myself, I'm not going to have a glass of wine tonight. And then I end up having a glass of wine. And then I can't figure out why. And that's because I'm not in control. Alcohol is. So my goal was a feelings-based goal. And it was, I want to get back in the driver's seat. I want to take back control over this thing. For many of my clients, it's, I want to make alcohol small and irrelevant, which is also an awesome goal about how you want to feel, right? So um, it might, you know, as, as you noticed in that goal, the rearticulation of the goal around sugar, I said, I will choose foods mindfully that nourish me and make me feel energized. In other words, I want to feel mindful, nourished and energized, right? Focusing on how you want to feel instead of what you want to do. Why is that important? Because if you have a goal that is completely based on a behavior, so the doing of something or the not doing of something, there's only one way to achieve success with that. And that's to either do the thing you said you were going to do or not do the thing you said you weren't going to do. And if we're focusing in on a feeling-based goal, there often are many paths to getting there. So you could still have a day where you eat sugar um, in that 30-day period. And at the end of it, feel like you're making mindful choices that are nourishing you and you feel more energized, right? It's just like, I could still have a day or two where I drink during an alcohol-free experiment, but the at the end of that, I might still feel like I'm back in the driver's seat around alcohol, right? So you want to set a goal you can actually achieve because we're so accustomed to setting these goals that are unrealistic and unachievable for all of the reasons I'm about to talk about. And then that leads to more shame and blame for us. And there is nothing women need less of than negative self-talk. We're awesome at it already. Let's try to cut that out for 2023. Okay. So first thing, frame your goals in abundance, not deprivation. Focus in on how you want to feel instead of what you want to do. Okay. Try to use I will instead of I won't language language when you're setting your goal. Second thing, try different, not harder. You probably heard me say this before. If you're trying to make change in an area where you have tried to make change before, instead of saying to yourself, okay, I know how to make that change. It's just the last time it didn't work because I didn't try hard enough. This time I'm just going to 
take that same program, that same plan, that same approach, and I'm going to try harder and it's going to work. I really encourage you to ask yourself whether it might just be that it's not the right plan or program for you. It might just be that it's not the right approach. And maybe it's actually time to try something completely different this time. Try different, not harder. Create a new model in whatever this area of change is that you want to make. And again, the tips that I'm giving you in this little bite-sized podcast episode are going to help you create that new model. Because my guess is a lot of the things I'm talking about, including the thing I just talked about, about framing your goal in abundance, has not been part of your previous attempts to make change. So open up your mind to the possibility that there's a different way to do this that might actually work way better than just trying harder at the old model. So if you've always pulled out that same plan for eating every January, Ask yourself how that's really working for you. If you're pulling it out again this year, that's a sign that it's not leading to permanent change, right? Okay. Um, get into experiment mode. I talked about this a little bit in the three C's podcast about how to do an effective alcohol experiment this year, um, which was a couple of episodes ago. But let me just remind you what that means. It means really getting truly curious why is it I'm doing things the way I'm doing them? What are the things I believe about how the way I'm doing things is working for me? And also, what are the things I believe about why it's going to be so hard to make change? Are those even true? How will I know? Well, the only way to know is to try something different, to create an experiment for yourself and actually go into it with some curiosity and let go of assumptions that might be holding you back from actually finding out what will serve you better. And so pay attention, gather the data, get a new journal, actually start becoming a mindful observer of your own life. What's working? What's not working? What's really hard? What's making things easier? So on the days where you do you, you do uh, things the way that you're trying to do things, what made it easier for you to accomplish it that day? Maybe it was that you had a good sleep the night, night before. Maybe it's that you remembered to bring your lunch to work so you didn't go hungry. Maybe it's that, you know, you took some time out for yourself that day to go for a walk or you had the opportunity to spend some time with a good friend and feel some connection that day. Pay attention to all of that. And on the days when it's harder, what's different those days that's making it harder? Um, experiment mode is a really critical part of making permanent lasting change because what you're saying effectively is, I don't actually know the answer here, but I'm willing to do the work to try to figure out what the right system is for me for making change and then for making it permanent. So experiment mode, second thing, stand close enough to the bullseye, my friends. What, what I mean by this is you cannot hit, you can't hit that bullseye if you're standing way too far away from that target, if you can't even see it. And this is what we so often do, especially around New Year's resolutions, is that we reach way too big. So first of all, we tend to take on more than one thing. So we'll say like, I'm going to go to the gym five days a week, and I'm also going to stop eating sugar for a month, and I'm going to quit drinking. And inevitably, <laughs> that leads to failure. Again, putting that in air quotes, because in my world, there really isn't any, any such thing as failure. It's just an opportunity to learn what's not working for you and what you can tweak and change going forward to set yourself up for greater success. But we women see it as failure. And that leads us back into that. All bets are off. Who cares? I can't do this. And then we just like throw in the towel and go back to all the habits that weren't serving us. So Standing close enough to the bullseye really means setting a goal that feels a little bit challenging, but still doable. So you don't want it to feel overwhelming and really, um, really impossible. You want it to feel, okay, I'm going to have to put some work in. This is going to require some, this is going to require a little extra effort. It's going to require, you know, um, me to stay a little bit more organized, but I can totally do this. Um, so how do you know if you've set a goal that is not close enough to bullseye, it doesn't work. You can't do it. So if you take on something at the beginning of January as a, as a goal uh, for change for 2023, and after a couple of weeks, it's not happening at all, that's a sign that you're too far away from the bullseye and you need to change your goal. You need to stand for, closer to the target, right? So um, 
you might take whatever it is that you thought, let's say you were, your goal was to get to the gym five, five days a week, but you're only getting to the gym twice a week, most weeks, you might change your goal to, I want to start in January with going to the gym twice a week or going to the gym three times a week. And then in February, I'm going to reassess where I am and tweak it if it feels like a good time to tweak it. So standing close enough to the bullseye basically just means setting a goal that's actually doable for you. It should feel a little bit hard, but not really, really, really hard, guys. Resisting the urge to doing it all at once. I mean, this is really connected to standing close enough to the bullseye. Um, but that that idea of like taking on a whole bunch of things all at once or taking on too much change, to one, one really big change all at once. If you can take that bigger goal and break it down into smaller milestones and work on stacking small changes one on top of each other. So start with something smaller. Like I was saying with the gym, maybe it's that I go to the gym twice a week for the first four weeks. And then after that, I reassess and maybe we shift the goal to three times a week. What you're doing there is giving yourself a real chance of succeeding, which means you have a chance of creating the opportunity to celebrate yourself, which is always awesome. And we're going to talk about that when we get to positive emotion and the power of positive emotion, but you're creating an opportunity to celebrate. You're building some confidence for yourself and um, you're, what you're not doing is creating a situation where you're likely to start beating yourself up and just throw in the towel. So start small and then stack your change. When it feels like you're doing that thing and it's become a little bit easier for you and maybe even mindless where you've done it enough times in a row that it's just happening and it's more automated for you, that's a sign that, that, it's, that you're ready to, to take on another small change and stack something on top of that. Okay. Um, and it's also really important in doing that, that you take a look at your total responsibilities, your responsibilities at work, your responsibilities at home, and you come up with a practical plan that actually works for you. So just because your BFF is doing something doesn't mean it's realistic for you. Just because some guru on Instagram is telling you that you can do it this way doesn't mean it's the right plan for you. You want to make sure that whatever you're doing can be done in your real life. And if you've listened to me or followed me for a while, you know that that is an underpinning of everything I do as a coach. It has to be practical and realistic for you. And that's why there's flexibility built into everything I do, including the Rewind program. Okay. Um, celebrate your successes, however small. So I just mentioned how if you create a goal that's actually achievable, you have a chance of succeeding and celebrating that. Positive emotion helps us to cement habits faster. So celebrate all your progress. So when it comes to changing habits, here's a little equation to keep in mind. Repetition plus positive emotion equals faster change. That's how it works. So we can repeat things. We know that it's about 66 times that we need to do something in a row for it to have a chance of becoming automated. And that's where it's like a moderately challenging thing, but not something really, really complicated. And I will say in my experience, working with women around topics like alcohol and food um, and even online shopping and some of the other coping mechanisms that we use around overwhelm and burnout those are not moderately challenging things to change. They're often really complicated beliefs and mindsets that go along with that, that are fueling those behaviors. So 66 times is definitely the bare minimum. However, if you incorporate positive emotion as you're doing this, remember what I said, like we, we only do what feels good guys. So if you incorporate that positive emotion because it feels good and you're doing something that is actually framed in abundance and you're really paying attention because you're in experiment mode and you're gathering data and you're realizing, wow, this feels great. I do have more energy because I have changed the way I'm eating and I'm incorporating more you know, natural um, nutrient dense foods and I'm eating regularly instead of skipping breakfast. Um, that is going to create some positive emotion for you and that's going to make you want to do it the next day. Um, and I want you to celebrate your successes, no matter how small they are, because celebration is a form of positive emotion. And so it adds to that second part of that equation, right? Repetition plus positive emotion, AKA celebration equals faster change. So I don't care if you're high-fiving yourself in the mirror, um, any little gesture that you do to celebrate something that's gone well is going to market for your brain as a good day and a good thing to try to do again, right? So 
for a lot of my clients, it's a, it's journaling that does that. So they may have a place where at the end of the day, they reflect on how their day went and how they're feeling about it. It might be that they um, get in the habit of actually like giving themselves like a, literally like a fist bump or a high five in the mirror um, because that provides that positive emotion or it can be sharing your successes with other people and again this is where the power of community comes in because it's so much easier to celebrate in a community in fact whenever I'm running a group um, whether it's the rewind group that starts in January this year um, or it's some other group my business coaching group for example I very often start the sessions out with okay who's got something to celebrate today um, so you can celebrate with people that you know, um, and love, or you can celebrate on your own, but celebration is a key piece to making permanent change because it helps create that positive emotion, which we know from all kinds of research. There's a guy out of Stanford called BJ Fogg, who's done a ton of research on this. We know that positive emotion has a real impact when it comes to making permanent change. Okay, the next one, plan for real life. I talked a little bit about this. Um, you have to make sure that whatever it is you're trying to accomplish is possible in your real life. Whatever plan or goals you set for yourself are actually doable. But you also have to just assume that life is going to get lifey at some point and something's going to throw you off your off track. You know, I mean, that's how life goes, guys. So I'm always going to recommend that you pay attention to, you know, for example, if you're trying to make change around, let's say how you eat, or you're trying to get back into some regular exercise, or you're trying to change the way um, you drink or drink less, I'm going to recommend you look back to your previous efforts and ask yourself, okay, what threw me off the last time I tried to do this? What happened did I end up having an unplanned vacation or did somebody show up for a spontaneous visit or was there this, you know, thing that I forgot about that happened or did I find myself at a party and I didn't know what to say about why I wasn't going to have a drink? What threw me off the last time and how can I um, make a plan for that this time? So that if it happens again, it doesn't throw me off this time. This is really how we get to permanent change. We've learned from our past efforts. And this is why that experiment mode is so critically important. Because if you're not in experiment mode and you're not paying attention, you're not going to learn these things. You won't notice these things and you won't be able to tweak your approach to set yourself up for better success the next time. So plan for real life. Can you make a plan B, a plan C, a plan D this time? We're really great at plan A, but we're terrible at the backup plans. So what happens if I get injured, for example, and I'm trying to incorporate more physical activity in my life? What am I going to do then? What's my plan? Oh, well, okay. If I have a, you know, if I get injured, I'm going to look and see if there's something else that I can do. Um, maybe I can swim during that time period, or maybe um, I'll just take the rest that I need to recover. And then when I go back to the gym, um, I'll pick up where I left off, but I'll, I'll, you know, put a, a weak buffer in my training plan so that uh, there's, I've actually accounted for the possibility that I might need to take a week off of training, or maybe what am I going to do if the weather gets really crappy and my plan is to go outside for a walk every day for a half an hour at lunchtime? Well, um, maybe I can, you know, go and use the the company gym and walk on the treadmill, or maybe I can walk those days, I can walk at night instead, or maybe I can just make up for it by doing a longer walk on the weekend. Um, that's planning for life, getting lifey for real life. That's plan B, plan C, plan D. Flexibility is incredibly important when it comes to actually making permanent change. Okay. Willpower. I told you we'd come back on this to this one. You cannot rely on willpower alone to make lasting change. And the reason you can't is because it's a finite resource and you will run out of it. So it is a short-term resource. And if it's the only thing you're relying on, you're going to fail. So how do you get around that? Well, there are a few things that you can do to kind of hack into willpower. So you can, for example, bottom load your day. So we always have more willpower in the morning. Our willpower is a resource that basically, think of it as like a little bank account that fills up overnight. So when you wake up in the morning, you're gonna have the most willpower that you'll have all day long. So you can do what I call bottom loading, which is where you do the hard stuff first. So if you're trying to get more exercise in, one of the things you can do is do that in the morning because that's when you have the most, you'll have the most uh, willpower uh, to rely on. Um, now, this is hard for things like not drinking alcohol because most people who are drinking alcohol more than they want are doing that in the evenings when they have the least amount of willpower. But you can still reserve more willpower for the evenings by automating more things during the daytime. 
So if the more little things you can make habitual and the more systems you can put in place to make things easier, the less willpower you're going to need to do the other things in your life that might feel hard. So automating other simple habits, like for example, making your lunch the night before. Now you don't have to use any willpower in the morning to uh, you know, take the time to actually make that lunch because it was done the night before. Or um getting your exercise out of way out of the way in the morning that's always something that sets people up for success when it comes to making other positive change like drinking less so if you can get that done in the morning that's going to help um so you can do things to kind of hack into that willpower but what you don't want to do is rely on willpower alone and the way that you do that is by making sure that you're setting your goals uh in the way I was talking about at the very beginning. So you're framing them in abundance and what you're going to get instead of what you have to give up. <laughs> Excuse me, because willpower is the tool that we have to use when we're doing something that doesn't feel fun. So if you can make this feel good and you can start looking forward to, to, to it every day and you can start celebrating all of the really great things that are coming to you as a result of making this change and incorporate that positive emotion, you're just going to have to use a whole lot less willpower. Okay. Um, the other way that we do that, um, specifically around alcohol, and we'll do this in the rewind program, is that we really question the beliefs that are keeping you stuck in the habit. So the things that you believe to be true about why you, for example, need alcohol or how it makes your life easier, we really question those. And we actually just overturn them. So we disprove them for your for, to your brain. Um, and when we disprove them, we take them off the table. And that makes that makes it it makes it a whole lot easier because we don't have to rely on nearly as much willpower, right? So if we no longer believe that we need alcohol to have fun, for example, or to relax, then we are just far less likely to want alcohol in a scenario where we would normally drink to have fun or to relax. And so we are going to have to use way less willpower in that situation. So that's the other thing we could do. Um, Second last thing, embrace self-compassion. Again, I talked about this in the three C's podcast in more detail, but you have got to figure out how to forgive yourself for something that you would normally characterize as a failure or a mistake. Because I know you know this. I know you've experienced this as many times as I have. When we set these black and white goals and there's only one way to achieve success and then life gets lifey and things don't go the way we want them to, we do what um, someone who I really respect named Mon Molly Carmel talks about, which is slashing all the tires, right? So we, you know, instead of just like hitting reset and continuing on, we have the black and white mentality about it. It feels like we completely failed. We might as well just throw everything out. So as she says, instead of getting out and changing the flat tire, we get out of the car, slash every single tire, dump gasoline on it and light it on fire. Um, and I want to help you prevent that from happening because that is a surefire way to not achieve your goals. If you can embrace self-compassion, if you could say, look, there's a really good reason why this is a problem for me. So for example, around alcohol, alcohol is an incredibly addictive, problematic substance for all humans, everyone. It's not, it's not a you problem. It's a substance problem. If you're finding yourself relying on alcohol more than you want to. So that's the first step in self-compassion. Um, and the second, you know, the second piece is like, I'm learning how to do this differently. And I'm actually making tons of progress. I'm learning all of these things. I'm noticing all of these things. Um, and I'm celebrating every small success. Even if I'm not drinking every, uh, if I'm not drinking every day, I am still drinking less than I was before. And that's something to celebrate. So staying in self-compassion, not judging yourself for being a human being who is necessarily going to have some bumps in the road as they try to make change because change is never linear. It is never this like straight line between A and B. It is a messy process for most of us as humans. So self-compassion is critically important and it's something you have to practice. I often say in the beginning, you need to have self-compassion for the fact that you do not yet have self-compassion. So when you find yourself beating yourself up, you have to let yourself off the hook for it. When you notice it, celebrate the fact that you actually noticed you're doing it and then choose something different. The last thing, one of my favorite things to say about goal setting, be stubborn in your goals, but flexible in your methods. The same system won't work forever. And you've probably experienced this in the past. You've maybe had, you know, a way of doing something that's worked for you for a long time. And then at some point it just doesn't work for you anymore. That's okay. There's always a different way to do it. 
And if you stay in this experiment mode, which I'm really going to encourage you to start, you know, taking on as like a life experiment. So if you're always in experiment mode and you're paying attention to what's going well and what's not going well and what's hard and what's not hard, then you can tweak your system. You can be flexible in your method, but you can stay really committed to that end goal of how you want to feel, right? And um, and by tweaking your system, you can set yourself up for continued success with that. But if you get set in your ways and you say, well, there's only one way to do this and I know how to do this and do this right. This has worked for me in the past. Uh, you're probably going to find yourself getting derailed and really getting frustrated. And again, I think one of the most important questions to ask yourself in that particular situation is, what's the evidence it has worked for me in the past? Because I think a lot of the time, if we get really honest about it, it hasn't worked for us. It hasn't led to, to lasting permanent change because we're back where we were last January, setting another goal around the same area that we want to make change in. So that's my quick list of the really important things that need to be in place if you want to make lasting change this year in 2023. And I hope you found that helpful, whatever the area is that you're trying to make change. I'd love to hear from you. If you found this podcast helpful and it caused you to switch around some of the language that you were using with your goal or to shrink your goal a little bit to make it more manageable so that you're standing closer to that bullseye, or if you started incorporating positive emotion and that made a difference for you, I, I'd love to know that. You can always send me an email. I love getting emails from you guys, or you can message me through Instagram which is at beat burnout and booze if you're not following me there yet and just let me know um, what your experience has been with with making change in 2023 uh again just a final reminder the coach-led rewind program officially starts january 6th i'd absolutely love to have you there it's a small women only group um it involves six weeks of daily videos they're short I am not going to overwhelm you with these. I promise most of them are less than five minutes, but they're awesome. And then we also have five one hour group coach sessions that will be recorded. So if you can't attend them live, you can watch the replay and you could submit the, your questions in advance. It's an amazing program. I love coaching it. I'm super excited about it. If you register before January 2nd or before the slots fill up, because there are a limited number of slots, you can take advantage of a hundred dollar off coupon, which is Jan rewind. So again, to register, go to wendymccallum.com forward slash rewind and use the coupon Jan rewind before January 2nd to get a hundred dollars off. Love to see you there. Have a wonderful rest of December and good luck everyone on making some permanent lasting change that serves you in 2023. You've been listening to Bite Size Balance with your host, Wendy McCallum. As a certified Naked Mind coach, I help busy women like you find freedom from alcohol. If you're starting to question your relationship with alcohol, you'll want to listen to my free three-part video series where I address the top three myths around why you think you need to drink. Sign up now at www.wendymccallum.com forward slash myths. That's www.wendymccallum.com forward slash myths.